And we see the tone changing in this passage of Scripture from there's grace available, don't quit, to if you quit, look what you have done. If you quit, look what you've done. Look what you've said. Look at your statement, friend. I am telling you, you've suffered nothing like Jesus Christ suffered on your behalf. You've forgotten that while you suffer now, He's suffered already. He knows. He knows. Being made perfect, verse 9, He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey Him. Here's the problem with going back. Jesus is the author of eternal salvation, not temporary salvation. It's not just for the period of time that you need help. It's eternal. The idea of the word perfect is the teleao, which means perfected, or means coming to a, a, a fullness or, or made full, completeness. Jesus made perfect the work on the cross. There was nothing left undone. Friend, there was nothing left undone on the cross with regard to the task necessary for God to look at you and proclaim you justified. But there was nothing left undone for God to enable you to live the Christian life. You can do it. You can make it. Christ did the work. It's finished. It's completed. It's perfected in the cross. How about instead of looking at your circumstances, looking to the cross and thanking Jesus, God, I'm thankful that this is not a matter that I have to settle on my own. God, I'm thankful that the circumstances that I'm going through this week are not circumstances that I've got to come up with the solution for, but that Jesus Christ was the solution for in His perfect work on the cross. God, I'm thankful that though I've fallen, though I've been redeemed and justified and I've failed You, that the work that is necessary for me was done on the cross. How often do we look to the cross of Jesus Christ when we fail? My friend, we need to go to the cross daily. We need to go to the cross daily and remember what Jesus did. Let's look on. Verse 10, He's called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek, the same kind of priesthood that Melchizedek had. And now here's the problem with Melchizedek that many of us run into. We don't know anything about him, really. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull, ye are dull of hearing. I wonder, I don't know this to be a fact, probably it isn't a fact, actually, but I wonder if on the Mount of Transfiguration, when Jesus was there with Moses and was Elijah, 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 Moses and Elijah, on the Mount, I wonder if the whole matter of Melchizedek came up. Peter, James, and John got to spend time with the Lord and they taught them a lot of things about heaven. And I wonder if the apostles were taught some things about Melchizedek. And Jesus saying, well, I'm a priest after the order of Melchizedek and let me give you some, some things, let me tell you some things that you don't know about Melchizedek. Some things Abraham wouldn't have known about Melchizedek. And I wonder if the apostles knew some of this information that's not recorded anywhere in any of the books or in the Bible even. The, the individual who uh, was we know was the Holy Spirit, the individual is inspired by the Holy Spirit to pen the book of Hebrews, had some things he wanted to write, and he said, it's not worthwhile because you're a baby. You ever come to the understanding that it's not worth explaining to some people some things? It's just not worth explaining. Christian, I want to tell you something. If you think you can explain to a rebellious Christian why God's convicted you about something, forget it. A Christian who's not willing to obey the Scripture, forget about explaining to them. Well, why do you do that? Hey, give them one chance. Show them from the Bible one time and they say, well, I don't get it. Be nice. But understand Hebrews chapter 5. By the way, when you don't understand simple Bible truth that other believers all seem to understand, Hebrews chapter 5, let's look at verse 11, or verse 12. Well, 11, Of whom we have many things, speaking of Melchizedek, to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. I'd like to tell you about Melchizedek, but I can't, 
because you don't have the maturity level to comprehend it. It's information that's, a beyond, that's over your head. I don't like to be spoken to as though things are over my head. I don't like it when people say, well, I'd explain it, but you wouldn't understand. How many of you like that statement? I'd explain, but you wouldn't understand. Sometimes it's true, though, isn't it? Sometimes folks are trying to explain things to me, and I'm just honest about it. I say, I don't understand. Right now, Brother Chris and I are trying to learn how to do web design. We'd like to learn how to design a website, get it hosted, so we know how. And a couple years ago, the fellow that does our website tried to explain to me how to get on our internet website, and he lost me like just very shortly after he started. Finally, I said, forget it. All right, he gave me the information. He showed me how to do it. I did it one time. He said, you think you could do that again? I said, there's no way in the world. Couldn't do it. And basically what I said was, this is a thing that's hard to be uttered, and uh, you might as well not utter it because I'm dull of hearing. I don't speak the same language you're speaking. I don't know what those HTMLs are and those MPEGs and the JPEGs and all those other uh, evil things. URL. M URLs and so forth. They're trouble. Ozone. <laughs> yeah, we know they came from the hole in the ozone layer. That's about all we know. <laughs> The national debt's connected to it, too. <laughs> Hard to be uttered. Folks, what have you learned in the last week about the character of God? In the last month, what Bible truth has the Holy Spirit implanted in your heart and helped you make application of Don't tell me you know too much to learn. Nobody knows too much to learn. As a famous man once said, nobody knows the Bible. <laughs> what he meant was, nobody completely knows everything about God. What have you learned? What truth has the Holy Spirit been able to make application of in your life because of the Bible? Do some self-diagnosis. It could be that you're dull of hearing. And that things are too hard to be uttered because you could not comprehend them. Verse 12, the reason for this difficulty in comprehension. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, for the time, it means you've been saved long enough, you've had enough life experience, you've seen enough, of God's hand in your life that you ought to be able to tell people about it. You have need the one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. You know something hurtful to a new believer is an old believer that's got a messed up life. I have a hard time dealing with that. It makes, it, honestly, it makes the ministry that the Lord has given to me difficult. I try to separate those folks from each other. Get a young Christian who believes the Bible and God's working in his life and the Holy Spirit is beginning to give him victories and you've got a person who's known Christ for a long time and they're a mess. And they just can't seem to get it together no matter what. I try to keep those folks apart because it'll confuse the young guy. I'll say it's, uh, it's so simple. What, what's, his, what's going on? What, what's wrong with him? Hey, how long has he been saved? Well, doesn't he know the Bible says? Yeah, he knows the Bible says, but he doesn't accept that. It's not good enough for him. Well, he knows he can have victory, but uh, he'd rather nurse his bitterness. Well, he knows that this is something that he's supposed to be well beyond and past, but he'd rather play around with the basic things. Christian, where are you and I? Where are we at? It's time to move forward. And for the time, and the idea for the time, for the time that you've known the Lord, you ought to be teachers. How long have you been saved? How long have you known Christ? How long do you need to be a novice? How long? 